This is the intro jingle. This is the K-pop Devok show with Eric Nam. Welcome back. You're listening to K-pop Devok with Kevin. Woo woo. Yeah, this is my second episode uh, while I'm taking over for Eric Nam. So if you guys are just tuning in and didn't catch the first episode with me, uh, don't worry. Eric's coming back. But uh, yeah, I am taking over for Eric since he's on tour right now. And I got his back. And who knows? If this goes well, I'll get my own podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, the first episode was super fun. Uh, I got to talk about my songs and introduce to, you know, those of you who don't really know who I am as an artist. But this time, uh, we are, like each episode, we're going to have a theme and feature a few songs that fit under that theme before going into a larger conversation around it. All right. And later, we'll be dipping our toes into the K-pop debug Discord. And if you're not on it, get on it. Thank you. All right. And so today's theme, uh, I thought of this theme. And it was, um, you know, something that is very relatable to this show, of course, because we're talking about K-pop. And uh, this theme that I chose is um, my favorite K-pop songs that I listen to these days. All right. So... Uh, Let's get straight into it because, yeah, I want to talk about all the the hot K-pop songs that are on the charts these days and some of the songs that I've been listening to personally. And uh, the first one is Filter by BTS. They just released their uh, album. Uh, Their most recent album is called Map of the Soul 7. And yeah, uh, I'm a huge BTS fan and I was super excited to listen to, you know, their new album because it was very highly anticipated. And uh, yeah, after watching, you know, their music video on and uh, after they released their full album, I was just like listening to all the, the tracks on the album. And the one that stuck out to me the most was Filter. And this is... She means solo song. And I felt like this song was like kind of different in a way. It didn't really like feel like BTS. Uh, and I, I like that they tried different sounds on this album. And the reason why this song caught my ears and my attention was because the guitar. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love guitar uh, acoustic sounds. And when this song started, I was like, ooh, I, I think this could be my jam. And then I found out this was Jimin's, um, Jimin's solo song. And I was like, ooh, okay. This is, this is going to be this is gonna be good. And um, if you haven't listened to it yet, uh, Jimin's vocals are, you know, very, very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird for me to say it. <laughs> you know, like the sounds that Jimin makes, it's, like, it's, like, it's always like, Oh, that was weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're listening to this on the podcast, yeah. Um, I apologize. No, but like, uh, Jimin has that like, that charm to him. Like, he has a very unique vocal tone. And yeah, I, I really, I really like his, his vocal tones. And um, this, the, the beat as well. It was, it was very like, you know. Uh, B, like, I, I could even, like, imagine him dancing to this track. And I can't, I can't wait for him to, like, release, like, a dance performance to this track. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the reason why I chose Filter from uh, BTS. So if you haven't checked out their recent album called Map of the Soul 7, please check it out. And they've been killing it these days on the charts. Man, they, they're, like, breaking their own records. Um, and... I thought it was so cool because they finally got to go on the carpool karaoke with James Corden. I was I was like, when are they gonna go on that show? And they finally did, and yeah, they they were being themselves, and I feel like they've like reached so many milestones, starting from even like at the start of this year they performed at the Grammys, which no K-pop idol has done before. So I'm really proud of them and I can't wait for them to succeed even more. And yeah, rooting for them. BTS. 
BTS. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, the next song that I chose for my favorite K-pop songs that I'm listening to these days is called Dive. Like Dive Studios. <laughs> Maybe a correlation right there. Dive by Icon. Yes. This song is my jam these days. The reason why I chose this song is because um, I love Big Bang. And this song brought back a lot of like nostalgic memories of like that era. Like um, I feel like this song… Like I think in my personal opinion that it was one of their strongest comebacks. I, I think. I really like this song. And I, I listen to it all the time in the car. And I'm just like singing along to it. And like I even like the music video because like their their dance choreo and their their red outfits and like fire everywhere. I was like, dang, that's intense. But they got they got swag. They got swag. All right. Okay. The next song is called Answer by 80s. 80s. I don't know why I say it with that <laughs> dem- demonic tone. <laughs> But um, no, they're one of my favorite rookie groups. They're definitely like the strongest rookie groups that, I, that I've seen uh, in the past year. Uh, I saw them perform at KCON last year in New York and LA. And their performance was just like… <sighs> mind-blowing. Uh, just the energy… Uh, the stage presence that they all had. I couldn't believe they were rookies. Like they, I felt like they were like, you know, going at it for like almost at least five years with all with all that like, I don't know. They got so much swag on stage. It's hard to believe that they were rookies. But yeah, Answer was uh, their uh, recent comeback. And uh, I, I like this song because of the EDM vibes. I like the whole… <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, the 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 melody and everything was very catchy to me. Uh we do so many events like outside of the actual cake on stage. Like we do like um meet and greets, we do like booth visits and all that and interviews. So we definitely see each other like all the time throughout the whole convention. But it's fun to see them um perform because for me, I go as an artist, but also like as an MC. So after like I'm done with the convention side, I get to see the concert. Um, and it's so it's so funny because like for 80s, they were like so like polite and they were like so like shy, I think, because it was their first time performing in the States. Um, and one of them, I think it was the rapper. Um, ah, his name. We'll put it in the caption. <laughs> but uh, he came up to me before my stage. And he was like, Oh, Sambinim. Like, I really looked up to you when I was a trainee. And it's like, it's such an honor to like see you here at KCON. And I'm like, oh my god. Like, because I really liked 80s. So it was weird for them. Like, I was a fan of them. But he was a fan of me. So it was, it was, it was really like, um, cool. But that's… I think also that's why I kind of kept an eye on them too. Because… They were so like mannerful and like polite. And like they actually like came up to me and they were like, you know, like we like really like you and like we like your music and we loved you kiss. And I was like, that was very flattering. So do you think that um, there's a need to adjust how you perform depending on like whether it's an American audience? Like what's your approach when you're in those like performing situations? I feel like it's all about like the fan engagement. And how much you interact with the audience. Um, like the fans that see you for the first time. They've probably seen your music videos. They've probably seen you know your stages and everything like online. But they want to see like you know how well you can interact with the audience. And like the, the mood that you make. And that's all up to the artist. And the music of course. Um, but to really stand out from the crowd. I think not just doing what you know, the, the, the normal so like choreo or anything. I think it's fun to like do like ad-libs and like, you know, 
say like do some phrases in English, even though you know. Uh, for a lot of the groups, the English is not their native language. So, but when the fans see like them making an effort to, to like you know speak English, even though they might not be like perfect, I think that what that's what like captures fans' hearts. Yeah, like at KCON um, card. Yeah, they're they're very popular. Um, you know, everywhere, <laughs> and they they also have very good um, fan engagement uh, because. Yeah, they do their choreo, but then they all go out in their own like direction and stuff to like, s- like put the mic to the fans or like get the crowd like pumped, you know. So Car was yeah very um, good in that aspect. Uh, who else? Um, Luna was very popular. Uh, they also were trying very hard to speak English, and you know. Trying to talk with the fans, and I feel like um, who else was there? Do you remember your first time performing in front of like a Chinese audience? Yes. When was that? That was back in 2014 uh, when You Kiss was on a U.S. tour, and I remember I was so like so comfortable on stage. Like I've never felt like not nervous before getting on on stage. I don't know. It was weird because maybe it was because I I know the American culture and like I knew how to like you know hype the crowd. I knew how to like say stuff that would make the crowd go like wild, you know. And when I'm like in Korea or like in Japan, like I get nervous. Like I don't know how. To, it's been so long, but I, I still get nervous in Asia for some reason. But like in America, like I feel so comfortable. Yeah. For rookies that perform for the first time in the in the states or wherever out, outside of Korea, I think it's uh, important to know like their culture uh, and how they respond to things, uh, and also, um, yeah, like I said, not doing the 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 normal like choreo or anything I think it's it's always fun to show your charm something that you can stand out as and I know it's hard for a lot of groups because a lot of the choreo is synced and everything but when once you have your time to shine and have that like few seconds of the spotlight I think it's it's so important to leave your mark um, and I don't think that mm, you can perfect that with practice. I think that's just, you know, with experience. Yeah. And the more uh, stages and the more tours that they go on uh, overseas, I think I think they'll catch on. All right. So we've got a few questions sent in by the fans. And I will read them to you. Hmm. From Squish, do you hang out with UKIS members? Hi, Squish. <laughs> Yes, I still do. Uh, we're all very, very tight. Um, I was in Japan for a while, so I couldn't see them like regularly. But when I would come back to Korea or when they would visit Japan, um, I would, you know, we would always hang out, grab food, grab coffee, hang out like the old times. And yeah, I, I support, you know, all my members and what they're doing and what they want to do. Um, yeah, and there's a few members that even got married, and I support them 100%. You know, uh, like, because at that time, such as Eli or like even Kisa, they're, I'm sure it was hard for them to to make that decision. But I, I respect them, and um, if they're happy, if they're doing what they're doing, I, I you know, they've always got my back. And it's always fun to just like hang out once in a while and just talk about like the old times because <laughs> we're like brothers and no matter how much time passes it'll always feel like you know like no time has passed it's, it's kind of crazy actually uh, because once we meet it's like it's not like oh how have you been it's like we just joke around and like you know do do the silly old stuff that we usually do I would say 
Hmm. I would say June. Yeah. So June was uh, a new addition to the group uh, since 2014. Yeah. And he was a baby. Like, he was so clueless. <laughs> he was like a little, a little like baby deer. Like, he, he didn't even, he was so scared to go on sca- stage and like, he didn't know what to do in interviews. And we like had to tell him what to say and like what to do. But uh, it's been already like six years and he's um, succeeded so much. You know, he, he won first place on audition, on audition a program called uh, The Unit. And he's been on um, in a lot of Korean dramas and musicals. And he's really made a name for himself out there. And he even made a solo debut, which I'm really proud of. So from seeing like a baby June into like the 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 grown up June that I I don't even believe I see these <laughs> days. It's crazy how much he he's you know um, developed as an artist and into into a man now. Yeah, and I always give him like good advice because he's always like, "Young, like I'm so stressed these days. Like, what do I do?" And it's like, "Yeah, I've been through that." Like, you know, and I try to give him good advice and try not to like stress him out even more. <laughs> Okay, if I had to choose a member who texts back the fastest and the slowest, the fastest would be Kisa. Yeah. I mean, Kisa and I are roommates and, and we always talk on cacao and everything. And he, if I say like, Kisa ba, like he's already like read it. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> it is so weird. It's like maybe like, to le- Tele- telepath- telepathy? Yeah, telepathy? Telepathy. <laughs> Sorry, my English. It's so weird because every time I send him a text, like he seems like he's sending me one at the same time. It's so weird. So yeah, fastest is skis up and the slowest would be... Slowest would be Eli. Yeah. And I understand because he's a daddy. <laughs> he's got a baby to take care of. So I understand that. But yeah. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> hmm. yeah. Even before uh, being a daddy, I think he was a bit slow with with my text. It's always weird because we we're like bros, and we're both American in that sense. Where like we don't really text that much. We just talk in person. Um, so it's awkward to like send him like texts. I don't know why. It's weird. <laughs> But Eli, love you, bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more question. Hmm. Did you make a New Year's resolution? If so, are you keeping up with it? Also, if you don't mind sharing it. All right. Uh, roofing and more. Good question. Uh, I always make New Year's resolutions and I never follow up. <laughs> Um, that's why I kind of just like gave up even making a re- New Year's resolution. Um, but actually this year, I really set my mind to working out more. And to have that dream body that I've always envisioned. And my dream body is, um, yeah, I mean, it would be buff. No, not, okay, not buff, like. Uh, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger buff, but like, I would say like, hmm, what's that word? Shredded? Yeah. Like muscle, have like muscles where I need them, but not like bulky, you know? Um, but I've always felt like I was slim and I can't bulk up and I can't um, gain a lot of muscle. That's just, that's just the way I am. Um, so it takes me like twice the amount of effort that a regular person would I don't know maybe it's my lack of effort I don't know but this year I really want to um, have that dream body uh, and yeah I, I have been keeping up with this so far and it's, it's only been what two months into the new year uh, yeah I've been going to CrossFit I've been going to like the gym and I've been going like three or four times a week so I'm pretty proud of myself Yes. <laughs> I 
literally wanted to puke. Like it's that intense. I've never wanted to puke after a workout. But CrossFit is my first time I felt that. Uh, but after the few first times, you get kind of used to it. I think it's just so intense that the body doesn't really adjust to it well. But um, yeah, with like moderation and when if you have a good balance of like how many times you go a week, I feel like it's not too bad on your joints or your muscle. A lot of people say like it's too intense, but I found a good balance and I, I see a difference. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to probably keep up with CrossFit this year, hopefully. Alrighty. So I got uh, time for one more question. All right. Does he have any plans for a world tour? Of course. That's been my dream since like forever. Um, yes, of course, I want to do world tour. I've already done a tour in Japan and I've done a small US tour. I can't really call it a tour because it's only been a tour in California, like LA and San Francisco. But uh, I do want to go to Latin America. I also want to do a tour in Europe. Also all around Asia and America. Like more cities in America, of course. Uh, so yeah, if, if there are clovers out there who want to see me perform, who want to meet me, please uh, leave a comment down below. And I'll be there. <laughs> all right. So that was... The episode, uh, that's my, that was my second episode and I already feel like I am getting a hang of it. And uh, this, today's episode was about my favorite K-pop songs these days. And yeah, I feel like you should definitely check out my recommendations. And if you have recommendations for me, uh, please leave a comment so I could check out more K-pop songs in the future. All right, thank you guys for so much for tuning in. And this was K-Pop Debak with Kevin. Woo, woo. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, did you guys like that video? Then make sure you guys subscribe to Dive Studios YouTube channel and put your notifications on because we got a lot more great content coming your way. Look at this video. See? Wow. Wow. And this, and this is great too. Enjoy.